Hi everybody. Now in this video, I'm going to help you to understand how do we connect private resources using a new feature of Oracle integration, which is called private endpoint. So in this video, I'm going to help you to understand what private endpoints are. Why do we need the private endpoint? How private endpoint works? What is the architecture and what are the necessary steps to use private endpoint? So the agenda of this video is to to explain what is private endpoint, what are the adapters that support private endpoint as of now, how private endpoint works as a, as a diagram representation, the prerequisites to use private endpoint, workflow to use private endpoint, the six steps that you have to take to connect private ATP using private endpoint, and architecture to connect private ATP using PE. And then we'll show you our end-to-end -end demo. How do we use this new feature? Let's begin. What is private endpoint? A private endpoint allows you to connect to private resources. When I say private resources, the resources which are not exposed over the internet that you cannot access from the public internet directly. The resources that are deployed in your private subnets. Of course, to, to deploy those private resources, you must have the virtual cloud network in Oracle in cloud infrastructure, and then you have the subnet. So basically, private endpoint gives you a flexibility to connect to your private resources without having the connectivity agent in place. So, so far, we have seen connectivity agent, and we have used connectivity agent to connect to the private resources, be it database, be it ATP, be it your REST APIs, be it your SOAP APIs, and any other third-party application. But with this newly featured private endpoint, you can remove the need of connectivity agent and you can connect your OCI private resources with the help of this private endpoint. The outbound traffic. So when integration will try to connect your private resources, that is called outbound or sometimes it is called egress traffic. The outbound traffic from integration goes via private network and traffic never goes to a public internet. From a security or network standpoint of view, this private endpoint is featured. Sometimes customer can raise say why, why uh, if, if integration and then you have an ATP, both are OI, OCI resources, then why I need to go to the public internet to connect to those two systems. So for that private endpoint, you, you, can, you can restrict that public access, only the private network is allowed to connect your private ATP or any other resources via integration. So remember, a private endpoint does not secure inbound traffic. If any REST resource deployed in an OCI sends a request to the integration. That is not a private endpoint feature. The private endpoint feature only allows for the outbound traffic from integration. So to use this private endpoint feature, Oracle has introduced a new access type in adapter called private endpoint. And when you choose the private endpoint, the private endpoint will allow you to connect your private resources within OCI via Oracle integration. So what are the adapter that supports private endpoint? As of yet, till 23.06, only few adapters are supported. The FTP adapter, Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse adapter, Autonomous Transaction Processing adapter, Oracle CPQ adapter, Oracle Database Cloud Service Adapter and REST Adapter. So these are the adapters that are supported as of yet till 23.06. But in future, you may have, uh, you can see other, other adapters as well that supports private endpoint. How actually private endpoint works? Let's look at a, a, a architectural point of view. So, uh, so you have a OCI, right? Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. You may have one reason. It may be Mumbai, Hyderabad, Ashburn, Phoenix. Any reason it can be. So, let's consider you have Oracle Integration Three instance, and then you have your VCN, the right hand side, and under VCN you have a private subnet. And in that private subnet, you may have different, different resources. It can be your REST server. It can be your database. It can be your ATP. So earlier, we used to use 
connectivity agent instead of this private endpoint. Now, and, and the traffic between connectivity agent and integration was a inbound. But now with this private endpoint feature, integration is going to call all your private resources within a single private subnet with the feature called private endpoint. And that will be a outbound communication. And that communication will happen via private channel. But, be, but remember, everything is in a single OCI region as of now. And only if you have other VC, other subnet and you have other resources in the other subnet, then you cannot connect. Only one subnet is allowed as of now with this private endpoint. What are the prerequisites to use private endpoint? You should have something in place before you start using that private endpoint feature. The first thing first, you must have the VCN virtual cloud network and the subnet. So VCN and subnet is basically required to deploy your resources. When I say resource, it can be your ATP database. It can be your compute instance where you are going to deploy your REST resources. It can be your database as a service or any other ser services. The VCN, but point to note, the VCN must be in the same region as your Oracle integration. It cannot be in a different region. The VCN and subnet can be in a different compartments. Subnet can be private or subnet can be public. You have to provision resource in subnet. So whatever resources you would like to access from Oracle integration, you have to provision those resources in the same subnet. It can be your ATP, it can be your database, it can be your REST server, etc. You have to create policy as well so that your Oracle integration can access the VCN. So in order to access your VCN from the Oracle integration, you should have a policy created allow group and the group name to manage virtual network family in compartment compartment name. Compartment name must be the same compartment name as your Oracle integration name. So this is a one-time task that you have to perform and your administrator can, can, uh, can create the policy on your behalf. Now, what is the workflow to use private endpoint? The, this is the complete workflow. First of all, you have to create virtual cloud network and subnet. If you already have it, you can skip this step, right? The second is provision resources in subnet. And you might have the resources already in the subnet. If you already have the resources, let's say ATP, REST resource, or database, then also you can skip it. Then the third step is to provision integration three instance. If you already have it, you can also skip the same. But the fourth step you must, you have to do. The fourth step is like a create private endpoint. There's a, there's a new tab that has been introduced in the integration three details page where from where you can create the private endpoint and only single private endpoint is supported as of yet. Then you have to set up some ingress and egress rules in the subnets private in the security list. And then create connection using adapter in integration three using a feature called PE. So these are the six steps that you have to follow to use that private endpoint. And we will show you how do we use all those things. How do we create VCN resources, integration, and I already have something set up already, but the actual thing that is required to use this private endpoint will show you. The six steps to connect private ATP using PE feature. So in this, in this uh, slides, the further slides, I'm going to show you what are the six steps that you need to follow to, to connect your private ATP using PE. And the same steps can be followed for other resources as well. So like, first of all, you have to create a VCN and subnet. So let's say I have a test VCN with a side the range 10.0.0.0 slash 16. And then in this side the range, you have created two subnet. One is pub and second is private subnet. And this private subnet has a side the range called 10.0.1.0.24. Okay, that is the first thing that you have to create. The second is to set up your ATP in the private subnet using this feature called private endpoint access only. So this private endpoint access only is only visible on the ATP page and it will allow your ATP to access from the private subnet. Okay, here you can see I chose the same uh, 
same VCN and the subnet in which I'm going to provision my ATP. Then a third step, you have to provision your Oracle integration three instance. That is a straightforward step. And then the fourth step, right? Like I mentioned, there's a new tab which has been introduced on the OIC Gen 3 page called Private Endpoints, where you have to click this button called Create Private Endpoint. And when you click this, a dialog box will be opened where you have to choose the VCN and your private subnet where your ATP is deployed. As a fifth step, you have to set up some ingress and egress rule with the VCN cider and ATP port. So you have to set up two ingress, one ingress and one egress rule where you will add the ingress rule and you will provide the source like 10.0.0.0 slash 16. That is your uh, VCN cider range and the, the destination port is your ATP port. Same thing you have to do in your ingress rule as well. The sixth step, while you create, choose your ATP connection, you have to give all those details like wallet, password, database service username, database service password, and there you have to give the private endpoint. And there you don't need a connectivity agent. This private endpoint will allow you to access your ATP directly without having the agent. All right. So let's see how this architecture looks like. So you have our Oracle integration here. Under Oracle integration, you have an adapter called ATP adapter. And in the same OCI region, you have set up a VCN with range 10.0.0.0/16. And there you have a private subnet. And in that private subnet, you have your ATP, right? And then what you're going to do in the security list of private subnet, you are going to add two rules, ingress and egress, where you will you give the source of your VCN along with the port of ATP. And then when you will establish the connection, you will select the private endpoint feature and the connection will happen. So this is how this works. Now let's get into a demo and see how we do this end to hand. So here I'm on OCI console. First of all, let's see the VCN networking and virtual cloud networks. And here you can see, I already have the test VCN setup. Under test VCN, I have created a private subnet, okay? And private subnet range is 10.0.1.0.24. And under private subnet, I have the security list. That is the first step that you have to follow. Then I have created a ATP database in the, uh, in the private subnet using the private endpoint access only. You can see PVT ATP. And there you can find out I to I chose the network test VCN and the private subnet and this is the private endpoint of my ATP and fine close. Now, if you would like to create another ATP, you can click here and then the main thing you have to choose here this private endpoint access only and then select your VCN and select the private subnet and then create. Okay, this is my second step. All right, the Third step is to provision your integration instance. So if you don't have any integration instance, you can simply go there and then set up your integration instance, create instance, and there you have to choose this integration three. All right, this is your third step that you have to follow. And then the fourth step, go there. You can see we have a tab called private endpoints. And here you have to choose a create private endpoint and you can only create one private endpoint as of yet. Click on this and there you will choose your private VCN, test VCN and there you will choose your private subnet in which you have deployed your ATP database and create private endpoint. As soon as you create a private endpoint, your integration instance will go in an update state. And as soon as your private endpoint is created, the instance will come back into the running state. So we have to wait for some time till the time it is provisioned. But few things to, uh, uh, to note here. You can only create single private endpoint. That is first. Second, if you have selected the wrong VCN, and the wrong subnet mistakenly, you cannot edit the private endpoint as of here. What you have to do, you have to delete the private endpoint and then and, and then recreate the private endpoint. But 
at later point of time oracle can give you the flexibility to update the endpoint and to add more private endpoints to connect to other subnet resources as well so let's wait and see how the private subnet looks like sorry the uh, the private endpoint looks like once it is created you can also see the work request it the when you create a private endpoint a work request will be created where you can see the progress of it and you can go there to this work request and you can see the progress it is 40 percent and if there is any error it will be visible in the error message but as of now it is in progress so we have to wait and but if you come there you can see this entry has been created for you but the instance is still in update mode and click here and then you have only delete option so this delete option is only available once your instance comes back in a running mode all right you can see now instance in back to the active state and my private endpoint is set up now and you can see create private endpoint is disabled the reason is you can only set up one private endpoint as of here and here you can see delete button is enabled now you can delete this private endpoint if in case you have selected the incorrect private subnet or incorrect ECN. that's fine now let's go back to the integration and see how we can use this private endpoint to connect to my ATP. So what I have to do, I will create a connection here with the help of ATP adapter. ATP private endpoint, trigger and invoke. And here optional properties, let me go back to my ATP page to fetch out the information. Uh, you have to go to the database connections page and then you can take this slow. And then here I have the wallet. Let me upload my wallet here. Wallet password. All right, and let's select the feature called private endpoint test. When you will click on a test, this will not work. The reason is we have missed one step. We have to add a uh, ingress and egress entry into the into the uh, subnet security list. So go back to the network, go to the VCN, choose your VCN from here, go back to the private subnet and you can see the list associated with it this is security list and there is no ingress and there is no egress rule but let's wait and see what type of error comes in when without adding the ingress and egress rule you will receive this error called read timeout 500 internal server error meaning the connectivity is not established so let's add an ingress rule here 10.0.0.0 slash 16. That is your VC inside the range and put the ATP port 1522. Add ingress rule and go to the egress rule and add the same rule here. Destination slash 16 and then 1522. Add egress. All right, now let's come back and let's test this connectivity. <clears throat> And here you can see connection is established successfully without connectivity agent. So that is the conclusion of this video. Like how do we access of the how do we access private resources with the help of private endpoint feature without connectivity agent? So that concludes my uh, demo and then private endpoint feature. I hope you find this video useful. Thank you. Bye-bye.